taught me is that um, I, I don't have to wear a tie. Somehow I just feel a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> Lose no. So, so somebody asked me about that. I, so I thought I'd just explain. I went on, on certain occasions. Turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 10. Verses 46 through 52 is a familiar passage of scripture. Mark 10, verses 46 through 52. Do you have it? Yeah. I'm reading from the New American Standard. Then they came to Jericho. Later, as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a large crowd, a beggar was blind named Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, Hallelujah. have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him here. Yeah. So they called the man who was blind and said, take courage, stand up, he's calling for you. Mm -hmm. and throwing off his cloak, he climbed up and came to Jesus. Jesus replied to him, and said, what do you want me to do for you? And the man said, who was blind, said, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. Jesus said unto him, go, your faith has made you well. Jesus said unto him, go, your faith has made you well. Let us pray. Father, we in the name of Jesus. We ask and pray that you would be with your humble servant. Anytime we stand behind this sacred desk, as some call it, we feel our insufficiency. But we pray that you would fill us up, Lord. Fill us up. Thank you. Allow us to take these words of scripture and expound upon them that your people would benefit and be glad that they were here. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk this morning about the catalyst of faith produces miracles. Okay, now. The catalyst of faith produces miracles. Let me start by asking, do you believe in miracles? I mean, do you really know miracles happen? We're living in a time where people are quick to say when something unusual happened, they, and to an individual especially, they say stuff like, you sure were lucky. Well, I've seen things in my own life that I didn't contribute to love. But for me individually and for others, it was described as a miracle. I mean, when you hit the edge of a bridge, flip over several times, get out of your car, you are unconscious and 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 and, and have no minus, no no real scratches on you. I mean, you, are, you, you, you you out of your mind for a couple of days. When you get a chance to go back and see the vehicle, and after you see it, you realize that even the authorities say it was a miracle. I don't need to let somebody know that miracles 
are still happening even today. And let me give you an example. A few years ago, a lady who was a single parent was driving on her on an icy road when she lost control of the vehicle. The car overturned into a pond, icy pond, turned upside down. The lady had an eight-month-old baby in the back seat in a child seat. The mother, according to the art, is immediately drowned because the car was upside down and in the icy waters. It took the emergency vehicles about 35 minutes to arrive on the scene after the police uh, called them. It was obvious to those standing around that there were no survivors. However, once the tow truck arrived, there was a voice that was heard coming from the car saying several times, come and help me. Everyone then jumped into action to get the emergency vehicle from the icy covered waters. And after an additional 40 minutes, they discovered that the child in the back seat might be still alive. Although part of the child's body was in the frigid waters for all that time, the paramedics and others could not even understand how the eight-month-old was still alive. Most of that child's body was immersed in water. Yet they rushed the child to the hospital and she survived not only the accident, but the frozen waters. Plus, nobody could understand or imagine how she managed to keep her head above water. Additionally, the voice that called, come and help me, was a man's voice. The mother perished, but the young girl was able to be given to the next of kin. And, and that girl is now approximately three years old. And, and, and listen, I said next of kin, and, and, and not because uh, she didn't have a father, but it's, it's not unusual in this day and time. Yeah. Miracles, y'all, are still happening. And our text gives us a picture of the catalyst of how faith produces miracles. I, I, I learned in my engineering class that the word catalyst was something that precipitates an event or make changes. The change in temperatures in the atmosphere can cause the weather to conditions to change, and the weather condition temperature changes causes a catalyst that produces tornadoes. Today, from the text, we hope to see how faith can be a catalyst that produces miracles. Thinking about the miracles, of, especially during the time when Jesus in biblical days, during that time, miracles basically came in four categories. Number one, it was faith healing. Number two, it was exorcisms. And number three, it was uh, resurrections. And number four, it was control over the natural elements. Our text today comes in the category of faith healing. I, I would argue this morning that miracles always have their sources in God. When he is not the source of a miracle, then they would not happen. And my definition of a miracle is the results of a supernatural agent lacking human explanation. Can I say it again? The results of a supernatural agency lacking human explanation. Yet there is a human element. It has to be in this natural world. If miracles are to take place, Bartimaeus in our text is an excellent example of a human element in the experience of the miraculous. God does not work his mirrors precariously through rhyme or reason. His actions are ordered and defined, and often they are the results of our requests. Amen. Jesus told his readers in Ephesians, uh, 
the third chapter, he says, you have not because you ask not. Of course, I, I need to interject, though, that, that for you to understand, I want to tell you that God is a mind reader. What happened? 
happened to his eye. We don't know about his eye problems, but it really makes no difference since in the first century there was no cure regardless. All we know is that he was blinded. Personally, if I had to lose one of my five senses, I thought about it. I don't know which one would be worse, not hearing or not seeing. But I think I'd rather see. I wish I had a witness. I tell you what I want you to do to me. I, I, know, I, know, I know you ain't going to do it, but I'm going to ask. Close your eyes. No, close your eyes. Just for a minute. Everybody, close your eyes. Just for a moment. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine with your eyes closed just for a moment. Think about not being able to see the face of your children. The expressions of the loved ones in your, in your, on your face, you can open them back up. But most of all, think about how it would change your life completely. Yeah, yeah. You no longer be able to do the things that you're doing. Believe me, your life would be totally different. Do you read the paper? Not if you're blind. Your independence, your lifestyle would be drastically changed. This is the predicament that Bartimaeus experienced. Obviously, he didn't drive a car. He couldn't do what others were doing in the first century. Uh, listen, he couldn't support his family like he should. He couldn't be a carpenter like Jesus. He couldn't be a fisherman like Peter. He couldn't be a tax collector like, like Matthew. So all he could do was manage to be a beggar and to eat. He had a need. Secondly, we notice the text. He brought his knees to Jesus, Jesus even when it wasn't easy. Mm. We would have to. Uh, how should I say this? Okay, here it is. Do you remember my mother and and and, and more than my mother, more than my father used to say this? She used to say that nothing worthwhile comes easy. Y'all remember that? These words are true. If they were not the law of physics that govern our world would have to be changed. Amen. Let me show you how I'm talking about it. You would be getting younger instead of getting older. Think about it. If mother's words weren't true. Listen, natural things, instead of the natural things wearing out, they, would, they wouldn't wear out. If these words weren't true, successes would be simple and failure would be complicated if mother's words weren't true. Listen. We know that life does not work like that. Perhaps, listen, perhaps it was intended to be that way in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Amen. Adam and Eve in the midst of the paradise would have lived. They never would have had difficulties. They never would have needed to everything they did was to be, was to be gratified. Yeah. It came easy in the garden until sin came. Yeah. 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 And since sin is in the world, my mother's words say nothing that you get is worth it comes easy. But a had a great need, and the great need would not met with ease. Look, the science of that time was powerless to help him. There were no fine eyeglass surgeons, no clinics, no treatment for what the uh, what 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 would affect the eyes, even minor things. That's why Jesus, you remember this, don't you? That's why Jesus had to spit on the ground, make some clay. And then told the blind man, go wash in the pool. And the man came back seeing because in that day, I wish I had some help. Blindness was hard. Got this, in, 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 in this very city, Bartimaeus was suffering with an affliction. The miracle working son of God was larger than The one that was healing without medicine, the one that healed both body and soul, That there was news already in Jericho of the presence of Jesus. Already he had healed the deaf and dumb. Already he had cast out 
evil spirits. Already he had fed the multitude 5,000 men beside women and children. Already he had called Dorcas' daughter back from the dead. Already he had walked on the water. And already he had healed the man at the pool of Bethesda, y'all. He already knew that the miracle worker was in time. Bartimaeus had heard the news that Jesus and he was determined to bring his condition before the son of David. But how would he do it? His condition did not permit him to seek Christ out like the multitude that followed him and flocked him. He must have longed for the opportunity to take himself directly to the Savior and plead his Personally, I wish y'all just stop looking at me. His condition not allow it. He had to stay stationed at his beggar's post at the gate of Jericho. But at last, on this day, he was at his post, and the news <laughs> that Jesus, the Son of God and his disciples was passing through the city. Finally, he heard the cry, the commotion. He knew Jesus was drawn near. And Mark says that he began to cry, Son David, have mercy on me. You, you do know what mercy means, don't you? What, what, uh, what, we, we know grace is God unmerited faith. But, 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 but mercy is when God don't give you what you deserve. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Y'all don't get it, so let me, let me try to explain it this way. Some of you in here are watching. Some of you drank all as much as you wanted to drink. Some of you smoked the pipe as much as you wanted to smoke the pipe. Some of you did whatever you was big and bad enough to do. Can I tell you what some of you did? Some of you squared it, you teased it, you kissed it, and it didn't belong to you. I wish I had a witness here. We'll catch that later. Some of you will get that later on when you go out. But there was somebody else that you know, maybe in your family, that was always in church, always did what was right, always did the righteous thing. But guess what? They're not here, but you still here. That's mercy. God didn't give you what you deserve. I wish I had a witness here. Ah, we don't know how Bonavis became blind. The text indicates he wanted to regain his son. Maybe it was his fault and maybe it wasn't. But in those days, there was a belief that when something happened to you, it was because of something you had done. And I'm sure that Bonavis was thinking it was because of something I've done. And that's why I cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Sometimes someone has said that he could not do what he would, but he did what he could. Too many of us fret about our predicament. We complain about our lack of blessings and about our lack of opportunity. Too many of us have the war with me syndrome. We do that while others 
Jesus' attention.